My name is Arash Azami and I'm the founder and CEO of BUS. And BUS works in the field of energy. It's not really an energy supplier as you would know them, but it's more an energy transition company, which means that all our efforts, all our activities are focused on helping our customers to become independent of other people's fuel. Before I started BUS, I, I led another energy company, an energy supplier, in the classic sense of the word. And we had lots and lots of customers in the business field. And what we did was we supplied them with electricity and gas. Um, and we put a margin on that and we made our money by doing so. What struck me when leading this business was that even though we had all kinds of wishes and dreams about a greener world and a better world and a more sustainable world, our business model was built around selling kilowatt hours and cubic meters of gas. So that means that whatever we did, we did not want our customer to consume less. That made me think of a new kind of business model that would actually inverse the model of an energy company, where our aim was to make more money as our customers would consume less energy. And uh, it took us a few years of design, but in the end we managed to do so. And what we are doing right now is we're helping our customers out to become independent of other people's energy, other people's fuel, centrally produced mainly, in coal-powered plants and in gas-fired plants, etc. And uh, we help our customers out with financial solutions, technological solutions, administrative solutions um, to help them become more and more independent. If we talk about sustainable business models, it, it might be it might come in handy to go into sustainability in itself. Um, sustainability is, is a word that is increasingly used in business and uh, if you look at it you might think that there's going to be a day where all business language is all about sustainability and the fact is that by using the word sustainability so much in business um, it loses value because we're using the word sustainability for things that are not really sustainable in other words we're changing the meaning of the word um, but if you go back to the meaning of the word sustainability, it is to sustain. And to sustain means you do something, you want to keep doing it, and by making the right choices you can keep doing it. A sustainable business model is a business model that will survive over a certain amount of time, a large amount of time. If you look at business plans, right now. Usually they're written for three years, for five years, something like that. And if you look at the aim for a sustainable business plan, it's actually the aim to have an effect on your surroundings, on your environment, on your society, on your customers, on yourself, that is a lot longer, that lasts a lot longer than these three or five years. If you want to build your business in a good way, build it like you like like a tree. By the choices that you make in the very very early beginning of planting a tree, by planting a certain seed, you're aiming for a certain fruit. So you have to think really hard before you start your business. What is the end result that I am aiming for? What is the change that I want to make in my life, or in the in the life of my family, or in the life of my employees? or my co-workers, or my partners, or maybe even in the field of my whole sector, or my country, or the world. If you want to um, build your business in a sustainable way, you have to start with picturing the end result. What is the fruit that my tree, my company, is going to bear?
we decided to go ahead and develop a 100 year plan knowing that we're not going to be there to see the end of it. That caused a few effects. One, the goal, the ultimate goal that we were aiming for in a 100 year plan could never be for our own benefit because we wouldn't be there. So for whose benefit would it be? It would be for the benefit probably of our grandchildren and their surroundings, their environment and society at that time. Now what we want with society at that time in 2110, we want energy to be abundantly and freely available to everybody because energy is a basic need and since it's a basic need, it should be a basic right. And everybody should be freely having access to that energy that he needs for his own survival and for his own well-being. So we are aiming for a world in 2110 where energy is freely and abundantly available to those who need it. The key to sustain your business longer than you will be around uh, because you will uh, sell your business at a certain point or go ahead and do something else or travel around the world and have fun or sail in your boat. The, the key is to record the DNA of your business. You have to do that very well, which means it's not about writing a commercial plan. I'm going to sell this next year, I'm going to sell 30% more the year after and 50% more the year after. If you give that to your successor, he might do it, but it's not about the DNA of your company. So you have to go back to what is then the DNA of my company. You have internal factors, you have external factors, and you have to describe them well. So document what you want your company to be like, what people you want to have in your company, what culture you want to create in your company, how are people going to deal with each other, how are they going to talk with each other, what language are they going to use, what words are they going to make up as they go. Look at what the end goal of your company is going to be like, what the organization should look like. The more you document, the more you record the DNA of your company, the easier it will be for your successor to carry on your work, the fruit of your brain. Bringing a team together is essential. Bringing the right team together is one of the most daunting and, and hard tasks that anyone can take in his life. And I have to be, I have to admit, for me it's been, it's been hard. It's been hard to find the right people because I didn't know what the right people were. And I still don't know to a certain extent. So you need to take the gamble. But the quintessential thing setting up a team together, especially if your aim is to change the world or to change something really big, is trust. It starts with trust. If you have a startup and you're all on your own and you have just a very cool idea, and you're starting to work it out and you're going to find the moment where you can actually build it into some company of some sort and then you're going to find out that you cannot do all the work alone anymore. And you're going to look for a partner or for an employee. The key is trust. Whoever you welcome into your plan, into your project, first needs to be someone that you can fully trust. Again, back to the tree, you judge a tree by its fruits. You don't judge somebody that comes into your office, your company, uh, by his CV, or by his words, or by his application letter, or by the family he comes from, or by the company that he had worked for. But you will judge him for the actions that he undertakes to help you uh, fulfill your 
great plan, which means you will find out as you work together. But be aware. Look well. There's not a key, there's not a trick to find out whether somebody is completely trustworthy or not. You just have to find out by doing it. But if you don't do the actions, you can never judge the tree by its fruit, so you're never going to find out. At BUS, we, we, we find the people that we work with mainly through our network. You could go by the principle that if somebody is your friend, his friend may be your friend also. So if you have a strong network, your network will actually grow because the members of your network will bring in the right people for you. The other thing that we do is we work with interns a lot, especially the talented young interns that want to change the world and are finishing the university studies or college studies. And these are very inspiring people with youthful energy. We're not a company where you send your CV and if it's a wonderful CV, we're going to see you. Because the CV is something that biases a lot. Um, it's used and abused a lot in the world. So what we want is to get to know people first and then I'll read, then I'll read their CV. But I want to get to know the person first because it's not really about what somebody has done before. It's about what somebody is about to do. To document the DNA of a company. At BUS we decided to do it according to a certain, uh, a certain a number of factors. The internal factors and external factors. So if we look at the internal factors, we're, lo we're looking at the social element. So what is the company culture? What kind of people do we look for? Then we look at the organization. <coughs> so what kind of company is it? What kind of legal structure are you looking for? In what place are you going to be? What country are you going to be? Etc. We're looking at the financial. How are you going to get the means to do your job? How are you going to pay your people? How are you going to finance the innovations that you're going to undertake? And we look at the technicalities. The technical. So we have social, organizational, financial, technical. And to put that short, it's soft, S-O-F-T. Then we have the external factors. And if we look at those, we look at economy, we look at awareness. Is the market aware of a certain problem that you're going to solve? Or are they not aware of the answer you're going to give because they're not aware of the fact that there is a problem? Um, you're looking at the societal elements. What is the society like? What is driving the society that you're aiming to target? What is important to them? And you look at ecological. Now, if you look at the internal factors, the SOFT, they're easy to influence, especially when you're a small company. It's easy to influence your company culture. It's easy to influence financial elements. It's easy to influence your organization. It's easy to influence the technology that you're working with. And it's very hard to influence the economy or the awareness of the people or whatever happens in society or uh, ecology. As you grow, especially if you grow a very, very large movement or a very large organization and it's going to have a lot of impact on, on the world, then the external factors become easy to influence and the internal factors become hard to influence. So, you switch places and that will change the role of your company in society as well. Okay, when we talk about company culture, there are many, many aspects to it. And it will remain something under development, always. You don't define a culture, then you go and do it. You develop the culture as you go. 
So you have to adapt and adapt and develop and develop and adapt and develop. Listen to your people. Ask the right questions. Be open to their answers. Make the changes that they are proposing that are actually beneficial to attaining your goal. That all adds up to making a company culture. It has to do with the language, the type of language, the tone of voice that is used in a company, external communication and in internal communication. So how do you deal with your employees? How do you reward your employees for the hard work that they're doing? Um, how do you deal with the media? How do you deal with the image that you create of your company? How close is the image that you create of your company to the identity of your company? It's always good to aim for no gap between identity and image. They have to be the same. But that's one of the hardest things to maintain as you go. At BUS, we look at our core values. Our core values are very simply put, simplicity. Everything that we do needs to be simple. We're working with very complex matter, but we need to make it very simple for our customers, for ourselves, for our employees, for our business partners, for society, for the media. We have to make things very simple, tangible. Unity is our second core value. It's all about unity. So unity in our organization means we're one team. We're not the one department competing with another department. We're a team with one task. And since the task that we have serves a far greater goal than all of us make up together, all the faces are actually turned towards that greater goal, which makes it a lot easier to be one team. But also unity as an external factor means our solution has to be integrated. It's a unified solution. It comprises hardware, it comprises software, it comprises technology, it comprises finance, it comprises energy, it comprises trade. So there's many, many elements in it and we put them together to be one product, one solution for our customers. So that's the unity extra. The third core value in us is ownership, which means an employee of us, a business partner of us, a supplier of us, has to take ownership over his part of the solution, but also ownership of the company can and will be shared among the people contributing to the success of the company in shares. And of course, our whole product, our whole solution for our customers is aimed at ownership. We want them to be the owner of their energy economy. Simplicity, solutions have to be simple. Unity, solutions have to be integrated, unified. And ownership, they have to lead to ownership. The answer is in the heart. If you want to do something, do something good. If you want to start a business, start a business that serves humanity, that people become happy from. What we did at BUS was uh, we looked at all our stakeholders. Who are our stakeholders? Who gets influenced by our company? Who gets influenced by the fact that we are doing our work? And we defined seven stakeholders. First, the shareholders, which is very logical. They need to be positively influenced by the work we're doing, because otherwise there's no point in starting. Second, our suppliers. If we do not give our suppliers deals that they become happy from, they're not going to be willing to service us in the right way. Third, our employees. We need to be good for our employees. We need them to uh, be able to grow, to be able to develop themselves, to be happy in their
their work to be happy in their work environment. Fourth, our employees' families. We had to realize that we're not only talking about employees, because we could make them very happy, and they would stay in our office 24 hours a day, and they would lose their families and divorce and everything, and that'd be horrible. So we need to be good, positively influencing our employees' families. How do you do that? By giving your employees time off when they need time. If they have a sick child, please let them be with a sick child. If they want to celebrate the anniversary uh, of their marriage with their wife, please let them celebrate the anniversary. And then invite the wife over. And do something cool together. So do something cool with the family. Fifth, we're talking about our customers. We have many customers, and they will stay customers if we are positively influencing them by the work we're doing. Sixth is about society. Positive influence in society. Now it starts to become really big, because we had very few shareholders, a few more suppliers, a few more employees, a few more families of employees, a few more customers, and now we're looking at society. So what is the impact of, on society? And you're going to see the impact, not right now, but you're going to see it in six years, and ten years, and twenty years, and whenever you're going to look back, and then you're going to see an effect on society. What effect do you want to have on society? Do you want people to be very aware of the problem that you were solving? Do you want them to be happy with the problem you are solving? Do you want to do something with education? Do you want to do something? Do you want to contribute to universities around you? Or maybe to primary schools around you? teaching children about the solution that you are giving to them. And then the seventh one is ecology. What is your influence on nature? What is your influence on the trees around you? What is the influence on the quality of the water around you? What is your impact on ecology around you? So with these seven shareholders, suppliers, employees, employees' families, customers, society, and ecology, if the answer is yes, I am in positively influencing all seven of them, fantastic. You can keep doing what you're doing for 100 years, everybody's going to be happy. If you want to get your business started and uh, you're in the game for a change, you want to make a change in the world, look at nature. Nature will give you the answers.